start by measuring from the back of your neck down to your ankles. In my case, 50 inches. And so then you want to add another 7 inches to account for the neck hole. So in my case, I end up with 57 inches. And so then you want to cut a semicircle of red material. And you want the flat part across the top. You want that to be double the 57, and then the middle straight down will be the 57, or whatever your measurement was. And then make a small cut in the very center of the flat part. And then you're going to cut out the neck hole. And so you'll cut a hole that is 7 inches across. That's why you added the extra 7 inches to your measurement. So you'll cut a hole that's 7 inches across and 7 inches deep. And that will form the neck hole. And so then put the cape on. And you just want to make a small cut a few inches below your fingers on your right side. And then over on your left side, you want to make a cut about midway up your lower leg because Strange has an asymmetrical cape. And so then you'll just cut along those cuts that you just made, carefully blending them into the side of the cape. You'll do that with both of them. Again, just going until you reach the edge of the cape. So you'll now have an asymmetrical cape. One side will be longer than the other side. And so for the texture on the lines on his cape, um, I couldn't really find anything that close, so I got this kind of weird little see-through thing, and I'm just going to double that in half to make it a little more solid. So I cut a strip of fabric to go along the flat side of the cape, and then you just want to fold the edges in from each side so that there's no place for it to fray. And then you just sew down each side of it all the way down. So here it is. The thread blends in really well with the fabric, so that's nice. But there's a line down each side of it. And basically that, you do a strip of that fabric all the way down each side of the flat side. And then the rest of the cape, you'll just leave plain for now. So then over on the left shoulder, I cut a circle, and then I cut some little notches on the inside of the circle. So they're like two inch, two inch notches. Um, because otherwise it won't fold into itself very well. So you just want to tuck under all those little notch pieces. So again, you have something that you can sew without it fraying. And if you don't like to sew, you can also just use fabric glue um, every place that I'm sewing, but I'm just sewing because it's a little more sturdy than the glue would be, but you can always use glue if you're not comfortable with the sewing machine. So then once you've got the entire inside pinned under, then you'll just fold under the outside and pin that all the way around. Basically you want this to be about an inch and a half to two inches wide, um, the, the circle when you're done pinning it. So just pin it all the way around the outside. So here it is once it's all pinned. And then you'll just sew two lines of thread, one on the inside and one on the outside, just to hold those bends in place. There it is all sewn. And then coming out of the circle, there are like little sun ray kind of things. Um, and I'm just going to do that by bunching up the fabric and sewing it down. There was like five or six of them, so however many you want to fit on your cape. And so you just make those by folding over the fabric where you want to sew it. And sew about a quarter of an inch of the fabric. So just like that, you end up with the little lines in it. So here it is with all the little rays streaming out from the sun or whatever it is. One of them I've got really crooked, but you don't notice it when the cape is hanging down. So um, For the inner lining, this was the closest fabric I could find. So you just want to cut a piece that's exactly the same size as the cape. And then you want to take the cape, and you want to fold the two edges into themselves. So you'll fold the cape to the inside, and then the lining to the inside, and then just pin those in place. And you'll do that all the way around, and then just sew the two layers together, and that'll keep it from unfraying. So here it is once I've got it all sewn. And again, you can just fabric glue this if you don't like to sew. There's the material on the outside and the lining on the inside. So then you want to cut a piece of pellon that's wider on the top than it is on the bottom. And that should be long enough to go around the neck hole. And you can see in the middle there that I've got a little piece. That's where I made it. Um, so the bottom's smaller than the top again, in the middle as well. So just lay it out on a piece of red fabric and fold the fabric over it. 
and then cut around it, giving yourself about an inch leeway around it. So there's the pelon, and there's the red fabric. And so over on each side, you're just going to fold the edges into themselves, basically the same way you did the liner. You just fold the edges into themselves, and then sew all the way down that. And then you'll do it on both sides, then on the flat side on the bottom, you just sew a straight stitch right down that. So here it is, once the edges are sewn to the inside, and then the flat line across the center. So you just want to trim that so it's only about a quarter of an inch sticking out. And then you're just going to run that around the cape. Um, I kind of messed this part up and I had to do it twice, um, but you don't want to cover up your little um, textured stripes on the side. I did, so I had to cut this off and do it again. So make sure when you're pinning it, you don't pin over the textured stripes. But basically, you just pin it to the collar and then you'll sew through all three layers. The um, collar piece you just made, the red fabric for the cape, and then the check material for the lining. So you'll sew all the way through all those. And so then for the little silver pieces that go on the edge of the cape, um, the closest thing I could find were these little barrette things, and so I just took out all the pieces on the inside of the barrette and folded down all the metal so that it was flat. So I ended up with this. Not exactly like what he had, but close as I could find. And then you just want to sew those on one on each corner of the cape. And so then here's the finished cape. Um, I kind of have to hold it on now because I don't have any snaps on it, but when I make the robe I will sew on some snaps so it can attach right to the robe.